I'm Bill Stillwell. A warm welcome to Digital Church from the East Solent and Downs Methodist Circuit in the south of England. We begin our worship by singing At the Name of Jesus.
This Sunday, the third one in Advent, has traditionally been called Gaudete Sunday. Gaudete is Latin for rejoice, so we continue our worship with a prayer of rejoicing, based on the letter to the Philippians, chapter 4, verses 4 to 7. So let's pray. God of all seasons, fill us with joy so that we may always rejoice. May we know the joy of your presence in every moment. May your gentleness be known through us always, for you are near. Enable us to bring everything to you in prayer, keeping us from all anxiety. May we know the courage and freedom to bring to you with thankful hearts all our prayers and supplications, longings and praises. And may your peace, which passes all understanding, guide our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Lord, we commit our failures as well as our successes into your hands and we bring for your healing the people and the situations, the wrongs and the hurts of the past. Give us courage, strength and generosity to let go and move on, leaving the past behind us and living the present to the full. Lead us always to be positive as we entrust the past to your mercy, the present to your love and the future to your providence. In the name of Christ our Saviour. Amen. Our Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Our reading comes from the Gospel of St. Luke, Luke chapter 3, verses 7 to 18. Crowds of people came out to John to be baptised by him. You snakes, he said to them, who told you that you could escape from the punishment God is about to send? Do those things that will show that you have turned from your sins. And don't start saying among yourselves that Abraham is your ancestor. I tell you that God can take these rocks and make descendants for Abraham. The axe is ready to cut down the trees at the roots. Every tree that does not bear good fruit will be cut down and thrown in the fire. The people asked him, what are we to do then? He answered, whoever has two shirts must give one to the man who has none, and whoever has food must share it. Some tax collectors came to be baptized, and they asked him, teacher, what are we to do? Don't collect more than is legal, he told them. Some soldiers also asked him, what about us? What are we to do? He said to them, don't take money from anyone by force or accuse anyone falsely. Be content with your pay. People's hopes began to rise and they began to wonder whether John perhaps might be the Messiah. So John said to all of them, I baptize you with water, but someone is coming who is much greater than I am. I am not good enough even to untie his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. He has his winnowing shovel with him to thresh out all the grain and gather the wheat into his barn. But he will burn the chaff in a fire that never goes out. In many different ways, John preached the good news to the people and urged them to change their ways.
we sing our hymn, Meekness and Majesty. Our second reading comes from the letter to the Philippians, chapter 4, verses 4 to 7. May you always be joyful in your union with the Lord. I say it again, rejoice. Show a gentle attitude toward everyone. The Lord is coming soon. Don't worry about anything, but in all your prayers, ask God for what you need always asking him with a thankful heart. And God's peace, which is far beyond human understanding, will keep your hearts and minds safe in union with Christ. A long time ago, I took a service in a little country chapel in Derbyshire. It all seemed to go okay, but a lady came up to me afterwards and said something I'd never forgotten. She fixed me with her glare and said with some strength of feeling, you preachers keep on telling us what we ought to do, but you never tell us how to do it. I don't remember what I said in reply, and I don't think I've got a ready defence now, 40 years later. 
I stand in a pretty long line of church preachers who keep telling people how they should behave, think and speak. We've never been half so good at offering guidance on how to achieve what we believe God is telling us to do. Mind you, you can get the same impression from the Bible. It seems to be full of prophets taking the moral high ground, telling people what to do, but not telling them how to wrestle with the conflicts inside themselves which prevent them being the Christians we feel God calls us to be. I guess that's because we frequently don't know the answers for ourselves, let alone for other people. John the Baptist carries on that same tradition in the passage we read from St. Luke's Gospel. He tells the people, whoever has two shirts must give one to the man who has none, and whoever has food must share it. He doesn't tell them what to do if their own children could starve as a result. He tells the tax collectors, don't collect more than is legal. But he doesn't tell them what to do if the legal limit is exorbitant. He tells the soldiers, don't take money from anyone by force or accuse anyone falsely. But what do you do if your commanding officer is doing it? Well, those moral issues might be fairly easy to resolve in principle. I think the commands in the letter to the Philippians are more difficult. St. Paul tells the Philippians, show a gentle attitude toward everyone. He doesn't tell them what to do when someone really winds you up or is doing something obviously criminal or just plain wrong. It also has to be said that in his letters, Paul himself sometimes loses his rag and gets really rude about people. Most difficult of all, though, is his command, don't worry about anything. My response would often be, well, I wasn't worried until you told me not to worry. What can I worry about, please? As Christians, we all face that lifelong struggle between what we believe God calls us to be on the one hand and our human frailty on the other. That's why public worship almost always includes a prayer of confession and forgiveness. And John the Baptist holds out a message of hope in that regard. He says that the baptism he offers is by water. That's to say, it's a purely physical thing to illustrate a spiritual commitment. On the other hand, he says, what Christ will do is to baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. Christ brings an overwhelming renewal from the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, which reaches to the depths and heights of our souls. The changes and challenges that this baptism brings aren't always easy. They may have the power of a fire burning in our hearts and minds. I'd also say that Christ doesn't offer this renewal just once and for all. We may find ourselves in that place any number of times in our lives. It may be held out to us time and time again as our relationship with him grows over the years. It may even come to us again during this Advent as we reflect and meditate once more on God's gift of his son to us to bring us forgiveness, freedom and hope. As we receive, accept, and celebrate that ever-present gift of renewal, we'll find ourselves in a place where we can grow closer to doing and being the people we believe God is calling us to be, and doing the things preachers keep reminding us we should be doing. I pray that we'll be receiving these things and come to Christ for his baptism with the Holy Spirit and with fire, not only this Advent, but throughout our lives. Then we may more truly know how right St. Paul was. Ask God for what you need, always asking him with a thankful heart. And God's peace, which is far beyond human understanding, will keep your hearts and minds safe 
in union with Christ Jesus. We sing our hymn, Jesus, Be the Centre. Jesus, be 
we offer our prayers for other people. Almighty God, as the new day dawns on this Advent Sunday, we give thanks for the first glimmers of the light which reminds us of the coming of your Son, Jesus Christ. We believe that your light has the power to overcome all darkness and pray that throughout the season of Advent, we may share in the mystery of your coming into the world. Please hear us as we pray in faith for the needs of the church and the world and to thank you for your goodness. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, we pray for your church today, gathering worldwide in various places of worship to praise you and to hear your holy word. Give us a sense of expectation as we come and inspiration as we go. We pray for your blessing on those who lead, preach and teach in all Christian churches. We pray that you will guide us on our spiritual journey through Advent until the day when we celebrate together the birth of your Son on Christmas Day. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Creator God, today our prayers for this troubled world are for an end to the coronavirus pandemic, a solution to the problem of terrorism, a resolution of the migrant crisis, and a positive outcome to climate change negotiations. Govern the hearts and minds of all world leaders and those in authority, that they may act justly, honestly, and according to your will. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father God, we pray for those amongst our families, friends and neighbours who will only see in Advent a hectic and worrying run-up to the excesses of a secular Christmas. Help us as we try to set an example of a true spirit of preparation for that incredibly precious gift of your Son, Jesus Christ. May people see in our services the true meaning of Christmas and experience your love for them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful God, we pray for all those for whom this day will be long and painful, for those in hospital or ill at home, those struggling with despair or depression, and for all who care for them. Comfort and heal all who suffer. Give them courage and hope in their troubles, and bring them the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, we pray for those who have died recently or at this time of year. Be near to all who mourn and comfort them with the knowledge that in the coming of your Son, Jesus, the gates of heaven have been opened wide for all who accept him as Lord and Saviour. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, as we prepare for the days ahead, strengthen our faith, deepen our love for you and for our neighbours, and open our eyes to the wonder of your creation, so that when our Saviour returns, he will find our hearts ready to receive him. In his name we ask it. Amen. Our hymn is, Lord, I lift your name on high.
And so we pray God's blessing upon us. May the power of the Holy Spirit be upon us. May the presence of Christ be real to us. And may God's peace, which is far beyond human understanding, keep our hearts and minds safe in union with Christ Jesus. Amen. <laughs>